Hi and welcome to my class. Today we are going to discuss first principle. Now the first principle as we know it or as it would be called is usually referred to a gradient of a curve. You have previously worked with a gradient but when you had done gradient you never worked with it as a curve. You simply worked with it as a straight line. So this is the gradient formula that you would use when you are working with gradients on a straight line. The gradient for a curve is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now in order to use this concept you must know how to substitute. In other words let's do the following. If I give you f of x the function is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6 and then I tell you what is the value of f of 3 okay if we have f of 3 that means wherever x is I must substitute it with 3 which will give me 3 squared minus 5 into 3 plus 6 if you get rid of the brackets that's fine but this is not what I want to emphasize on. What I'm showing you is that you have previously always used numbers to substitute. What if we had to do f of a? What that would mean is exactly how you would have substituted the 3 into the x. You are now going to substitute a into x. So I'd end up with a squared minus 5a plus 6. Now look at the concept, it's exactly the same. Instead of x, I put 3. Instead of x, I put a. Now let's make it more challenging. If I had f of a plus b, then it means wherever x is, I am now putting a plus b. But because it is two terms, a plus b is two terms, you have to maintain the bracket. So what did we do? Wherever x was, we put in a plus b. Wherever x was, we put in a plus b. When you have an expression that has now two terms and brackets, you need to simplify it. This version was already simplified. But here you have to continue. So if we get rid of the brackets, it is like you're simplifying in grade 10. If you are not familiar with this, you have to go and look it up. Simplifying in calculus is important, especially when you're using the first principle. So when we get rid of the brackets, we're going to end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus 5a minus 5b plus 6. In order to do this, you must be able to simplify. Simplifying is done in your grade 10 video, so you have to be familiar with your simplifying before you can continue with the first principle which is gradient of a curve. Now, how do we go about doing the first principle? Okay, the first principle, you need to firstly write it down correctly. Now, the gradient is equal to, do you notice I have put a little stroke? That means I am referring to the gradient. Now, the gradient is equal to limit h tends to be 0 and the formula what is important is you have to look at the way it is written in the metric exam you get a mark for writing it correctly now if you put this equal to sign in this place it's incorrect they will immediately penalize you if you stop writing the limit h tends to be 0 they will penalize you. So you have to write this formula as you see it. It is also on your formula sheet. So if you're unsure, go to your formula sheet and write it down correctly. Now, once they give you this, they would tell you, calculate the gradient of the following equation using the first principle. When they say using the first principle, 
you have to use this formula there are other methods we're going to learn and we are going to learn them soon but if they say in the question solve the following equation using the first principle you have to use the first principle let us do an example now right so they're telling you to find the value of f of x which refers to the gradient if f of x is equal to 3x squared. Now in order to do this, number one, you need f of x plus h. Number two, you need f of x. After that, it's simply substituting. But when you substitute, what you will notice, and this is, this is your giveaway. If you notice this, then you would know, am I going correctly or am I going incorrectly? You will notice whenever you substitute, no matter what, your f of x actually eventually cancels out. Then, you're going to factorize and you're going to solve. Now, the reason we would factorize, you will see later, is because we're working with limits and when we're working with limits if we simply substitute it's undefined because h is a denominator and its h tends to be zero so if you simply substitute you're going to end up with an undefined question that's why you have to factorize now let us try the following equation first we're going to do f of x plus h now our equation is f of x is equal to 3x squared so f of x plus h means wherever x is I am now going to put x plus h so what do I end up with I end up with 3 into x plus h all squared you must get rid of all the brackets if you remember when we did a plus b we had to simplify it and then I said okay that's enough so likewise we have to simplify so we have 3 into x plus h, x plus h. Again, this is simplifying which is done in your grade 10 syllabus. So if you are not familiar with the simplifying or if you are not familiar how I am coming to the answer, you have to go back to those videos and master the concept. We would end up with 3 x squared plus 2 xh plus h squared. Then the 3 would go into it. Right, so what do we have? Our answer for x plus h is 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. So that is for f of x plus h. Then we have 3x squared, which is the answer for f of x. Now we're going to go to the formula and we're going to substitute. Now look at what we're doing. We're going to use the formula f of x equals, then I've got the limit, h tends to be 0, and then I've got the gradient formula. So, in place of f of x plus h, I know f of x plus h is equal to 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. So, I'm going to write that in. 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. You've already calculated it. So I'm, it's like simultaneous equations. You take out the f of x plus h. I'm taking out this piece. And in place of it, I'm putting the expression that I've calculated. Minus. Now this minus is important. You have to put a bracket in. You see, I can't simply, in f of x, put 3x squared. You can't simply do that because if you just write minus 3x squared, in this expression it would work. But if I have two terms or three terms, then this minus sign starts changing everything. So make sure that you put a bracket and then you put 3x squared. So again, in place of f of x, I'm taking f of x out and I'm putting in 3x squared all over h. It's important that at all times you write limit 
h tends to be 0. And then our equal to sign before the limit. In this section, they are very finicky about their writing. They will penalize you if you write the limit in the wrong place. They will penalize you if you don't write the limit. They will penalize you if you put the equal to sign in the wrong place. So make sure that you are consistently writing correctly. Now, let's go to the next step. So we simply, now we're going to simplify, but look at what happens. Okay, so I have limit h tends to be 0, which you're going to carry down with you until you substitute. We have 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 3x squared all over h. Look at what happens. Look at the 3x squared and the minus 3x squared. It cancels out. And that is your giveaway. Am I doing this thing right or am I doing it incorrectly? Because your f of x will always cancel out. In this question, my f of x was 3x squared. And look, 3x squared is gone. Now you factorize. If I'm left with 6xh plus 3h squared, my common is h. That gives me 6x plus 3h. All over h. Again, remember, carry down your limit. The h's cancel out. Now we're back to limits. If you are not familiar with what I'm doing now, you have to go to the video where we discussed limits. If we substitute 0 into this expression now, it does not make it undefined. So I can now substitute in. But remember, we have discussed this in limits. So if you are not familiar with what I have done, you have to go back to the video on limits and learn this. Now, once you substitute 0, you would get your answer. But in the previous video, I had told you, you do not show that step. Because h is not equal to 0. It just tends to be 0. So in your head, you can do it or on the side of a piece of paper. So give me 6x, but you do not show this in your working out. So you can't put it here. It will be incorrect. You cannot show that step. Then we would have 6x as your answer. But notice, I am not writing down the limit now. Why? Because I've used the limit up. As soon as you use it, you stop writing it down. Let's try a more difficult example. Right, now. When we're doing a more challenging example, you will notice that the work is a bit longer, but the method is the same. Number one, we need f of x plus h. So, in place of x, I now am going to have x plus h. Now remember, after this, you have to simplify. So we're going to have 2 into x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 1. I'm simplifying. This is in your previous videos. You need to know how to do this. Now we're going to work with our formula. It is important how you write down your formula. So we have f of x is equal to limit h tends to be 0. Remember I told you the writing in this section is important. Okay, the way you write it is very important. There's a mark usually allocated at this step. It is very often that there is a mark. Sometimes it won't be, but most of the time you will see that there's a mark allocated there. So make sure you write it correctly. It's on your formula sheet. If you're not sure, go and look into your formula sheet. Now we're going to substitute. So we're going to take this entire answer and we're going to put it into this spot, f of x plus h. So what do we have? We have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 1. Then we have minus. Now remember I told you it is important to put the f of x expression in brackets. So we're going to have minus but I'm going to put 
2x squared minus 3x plus 1 in brackets all over h. And then again emphasizing on our writing limit h tends to be 0. Okay. Now look what happens when we take in the minus. We have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 1 minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 all over h. Limit h tends to be 0. Now look 2x squared cancels with minus 2x squared. 3x cancels with minus 3x and minus 1 cancels with 1. Do you notice that the entire f of x has cancelled? So you know you're doing it correct. If you see the f of x is not cancelling, you need to stop and go back and realize that it's not cancelling. Okay, what are we left with? We are left with 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3h all over h. Again, watch your writing. After we've got that, our first rule was to do f of x plus h. Our second rule was to get f of x, which we had. Then we substituted and we cancelled. Now we need to factorize and then solve. So what do I notice on the top? The common is h. I'm left with 4x plus 2h minus 3 all over h. I can cancel my h. As soon as I canceled my h's, I can now substitute 0 because it doesn't make my equation undefined. Again, you don't show that step. All you know is that this one with h falls out, giving me an answer of 4x minus 3. So f of x is going to equal to 4x minus 3. Thank you for watching.